there are about 100 ragas in circulation, 80 to 100 uh, that are widely performed, very well known ragas, what are called prachalit ragas. And uh, there are many more that are rare, that are performed by uh, select schools um, and select musicians even. And uh, there are many more that are obsolete, lupta ragas. That is, they have disappeared from practice. Now, with so many ragas and given the general propensity to its classification that uh, Sanskrit traditions of in intellectual inquiry have, ragas have also been classified. Uh, the medieval text, medieval text onwards, even earlier, uh, ragas are classified along various lines. Now, so raga is a um, complex thing, right? It, it is. Uh, is characterized by the presence or absence of swaras. That is one thing about it. That there are many other things about it such as the uh, melodic uh, personality of it, the phrases that uh, are typical in the raga, the way it moves and so on, even the ornament. So, we can classify ragas along these various parameters. Um, as it happens, there are three uh, well-known systems of classification in Hindustani music. These are the um, Mela or That Padhati or system. Uh, then we have the Raganga Padhati, the Raga Ragini Padhati. Of these Raga Ragini Padhati is um, of historical interest merely, um, plus uh, there are some other uh, aspects that, um, that make it important to us even today. But Ragaragini Paddhati as a classification system is quite obsolete, nobody uses it. But the other two, Mela Paddhati and Raganga Paddhati, Paddhati means system. So the Mela or Thart system or the Raganga system, these are two prevalent uh, systems of classifying Ragas. Now, why do we need to classify ragas? It's just to get um, a better sense of the kind of variety of ragas that we have. Even to understand a raga, you you need to understand what it shares with other ragas and how it differs from ragas that might otherwise, uh, you know, maybe share melodic uh, material with it and so on. So classification generally. Uh, is this a way of, uh, there is intellectual gain in it because you, you do get some clarity about uh, what we are talking about. And so, so also with ragas, but we will see that ragas are particularly difficult to classify. So, we will now first talk about the Mela Padhati. Mela in Sanskrit and in Hindi, uh, it means uh, an assembly, a meeting. Um, and um, as a category, as a musical category, it is uh, an assembly of swaras. It is just a set of swaras come together. Um, the, the, the definition of Mela that is that, uh, found in Raga Vibodha, it is a text of the 17th century, it is a very important text by, written by one Somanatha. Uh, this is a very clear definition of Mela as a meeting of swaras, a place where swaras are together, a set of swaras. Milanti vargi bhavanti raga yatra iti tad ashrayaha swara samsthana mishesha mela. It is where ragas meet or are classified, that is called a mela. It is a swara samsthana, where swaras, swaras are together, samsthana in the same place. In fact, uh, samsthana is a synonym for mela in many of the texts, North Indian texts especially. And uh, in, in contemporary usage, mel uh, is also called thought. So mela then is a scale. It is a certain combination of the seven swaras arranged in descending order. Um, and Ragas that use some 
or all of those swaras are classified under that mela. And what happens is that the raga, which is the most popular among those that are classified under a particular mela, that raga gives its name to the mela itself. Um, the, the, the important thing to remember is Mela is not Raga. It is just a set of seven Swaras. It has no Ranjakatva. As uh, we, we have another de definition, Mela Swara Samuha. It is just Swara Samuha. It is just a group of Swaras. It does not have Ranjakatva. And uh, it is also, it is only a set of notes in the ascending order. You do not have an avarohana also for a male because it is just a set of notes. Here we have uh, Venkatamakhin of in Chaturdandi Prakashika, another landmark treatise, then he says Swararohana meva rupam yesham te mela. It is mela, their, their form is only of uh, swaras in arohana. So, the, this is the idea of mela as a classification system. That is, ragas are classified based on the swaras that comprise them. So, all ragas that have shuddha swaras would be classified together, whereas all ragas that would have shuddha swaras, but uh, the ma is tevra, right? Rega dhani are shuddha, but ma is tevra, then those ragas would be classified together. And as I said, each category, each class would go by the name of the most popular raga that is classified under that mela. This is really the idea with which the male mela as a category of classification started. And the first available treatise uh, to talk about mela as a system of classification is the Swara Mela Kalanidhi of Rama Matya, who lived in the Vijayanagara Empire. Um, he was with the Vijayanagara court. So we have this is a landmark treatise really, especially for uh, South Indian music. So, after uh, this after uh, Rama Matya's uh, Swara Mela Kalanidhi, the idea of male is spread and then we have Lakshana Granthakaras uh, from all around the country suggesting, uh, uh, putting forth their own male system of classification coming up with different numbers of melas. Some have uh, suggested that there are 12, others have said that there are 19, maybe 23. Uh, it, it all depends on the the, num the kind of ragas that they were trying to account for. So, based on that uh, and based on the period and the time and the place, number of melas were different. So, while mela is a medieval idea really uh, and is found in many texts, contemporary Hindustani music adopted the mela system as uh, set forth by Pandit Vishnu Narayan Bhat Khande in the 20th century, in the uh, early 20th, 20th century. Uh, we will hear this name many times during this course uh, because um, his work has impacted and has been definitive uh, in the evolution, in the, in the particularly uh, in the difficult period of transition of uh, Hindustani music in the 20th century. Now, Bhatkhande uh, had this project uh, of uh, codifying Hindustani music 
as uh, really because while the, the performance aspect of it was vibrant there was there was much wanting by way of standardization and uh, codification so that is what he set out to do and uh, he did it he he perused uh, the medieval texts even ancient texts to see how uh, he can use those uh, categories to bring about order in the uh, practice of hindustani music at that time he also traveled south he traveled uh, to the south to see how carnatic music is systematized how um, standardization is achieved by standardization what i mean is that uh, see th it, this music primarily exists as a performance tradition or many performance traditions we should say and uh, uh, especially in north indian music uh, because this music was practiced by uh, court musicians and court musicians of different courts had their own um, what should i say their own performance practices and their own conceptions of idea their own conceptions of uh, raga and uh, and alap and so on there was a there was considerable disparity uh, in these various traditions and if we had to talk of hindustani music as one system then some amount of standardization had to be brought in and that is what bhatkhandi sought to do and uh, he he came upon the 72 mela karta the 72 mela system of uh, in carnatic music that was propounded by venkata makhin in his chaturdandi prakashika in fact uh, bhatkhandi uh, acquired a copy of the chaturdandi prakashika which is a 17th century text chaturdandi prakashika um and so in carnatic music even today uh, the system of mela that is used is uh, one that has that sets forth 72 mela 72 such combinations of swaras under which ragas can be classified now inspired by this bhatkhande um he worked out then given the uh, swara material that we have in hindustani music and the, the nomenclature really the nomenclature of the swaras see because see there are two things about mela first is that it should include all the swaras uh, in the aroha and it should be a straight uh, scale it shouldn't be zigzag it can't be sagari ma and all that it has to be sari gama pa dhani it's a particular combination of sari gama pa dhani in that order and no two varieties of the same swara can be there in a single mela every mela will have one and only one variety of every note besides sa and pa of course so given that um uh, and given the way uh, ragas uh, given the way swaras are uh, named uh, and organized in hindustani music 32 combinations or thir- 32 melas are possible i'll quickly show how so you have sa re komal this is a notation for re komal and you have re shuddha then you have ga komal ga shuddha you have ma shuddha and ma tevra then you have pa then you have dha komal dha shuddha then ni komal ni shuddha so these are the um uh, 12 swarasthanas right 12 swaras in hindustani music now if you need a combination of sa re ga ma pa dha ni how many are possible 
uh, of course you can't have sa ga re ma pa dha pa ni dha sa it has to be in this order sa re ga ma pa dha ni do derived okay. so the way the 72 melas were derived by venkatamakhen um, uh, bhatkandi basically followed that in order to uh, show how 32 melas are possible for us and incidentally those of you who are interested to uh, see how the 72 melas have, were generated by Venkatamakhin, you may please visit the link that is given below in the description box. Um, so he followed how Venkatamakhin derived uh, the 72 melas and it is basically he kept the ray and ga constant, right. With one combination of ray ga, how many combinations of dhani are possible? Um, so, we, we let us take sa, ma and pa as a constant for the time being. So, ma we are taking it as shuddha madhyam. Now, how many combinations of rega are there? Let us take any one combination of rega. Let us say komal re, komal gandhar. So, how many variety, how many uh, combinations with ni, dha ni are possible? So, rega can combine with dha komal ni komal it can combine with dha shuddha ni komal then it can combine with dha komal ni shuddha and then it can combine with dha shuddha ni shuddha right so four combinations of po are possible for one combination of riga. Similarly, there are four combinations of riga possible. So, in all, how many combinations of riga, dhani are possible? That is 4 into 4, you have 16. 16 possible combinations of riga, dhani and that is with just one ma, that is let us say shuddha madhyam. And you will have a similar 16 for uh, 16 combinations possible with T Brahma. So, in all you have 32 combinations of Saregama Padhani that are possible and therefore 32 Melas are possible mathematically. Um, so, to those of you who are intrigued how is it that 72 Melas were possible for Venkatamakin and only 32 were, possi were possible for Bhat Khandi. It is really just a matter of Swara nom nomenclature. And if you uh, really visit the uh, link that I have suggested, so Bhat Khandi knew the 72 Mela of uh, Carnatic music. He also computed 32 possible Melas for Hindustani music. But intriguingly, he did not put forth a theory of 32 Melas. He only listed 10 combinations from among the 32 as the uh, melas or thoughts of Hindustani music and he said that these are enough, these 10 are enough to account for or to classify all the known ragas at that time. All the ragas that were prevalent at that time could be classified under these 10 uh, melas or thoughts. And he also said that if somebody wants to uh, have more thoughts, that is also fine. Now, this is um, utterly intriguing that when you set out uh, to, to, to offer a classification theory, you know what is possible mathematically, but you just step back and say 10 are enough. The 10 thoughts that he um, proposed uh, were Bhairav. Todi, Asavari, Bilawal, Marwa, Purvi, Kalyan, Khamaj, Kafi and Bhairavi. Um, he also factored in the Samay Pranari, the, the Raga time association and he, he, he wanted to make sure that there are enough thoughts for every prahar or every part of the day or night. So, so there are many Ragas that are, uh, that cannot be unproblematically classified under one of these ten thoughts. So, the ra uh, raga may have a note that is not uh, 
the note of the mailer and yet it is just classified under it as, as an exception. Ahir Bhairav for instance, uh, Ahir Bhairav is like this. So the notes it uses are Sari Gama Padani. These are the notes. But it is classified under Bhaira. And there is a reason for that, which we will see in the next video, because it draws from the other classification system, the Raganga Padhati. Bhaira, under which Ahir Bhaira is classified, goes Sari Gama Padani. So both the dha and ni are different. Ahir Bhairav has a Shuddha dha and a Komal ni, whereas Bhairav has a Komal dha and Shuddha ni. And yet Ahir Bhairav is classified under Bhairav. And the world of Hindustani music is quite okay with this, with this anomaly. You see, because there is a fundamental problem with the thought system of classification uh, when, when it comes to ragas. So even if it were complete, even if we acknowledged 32 thoughts, uh, 32 possible combinations, there will still be ragas that are left out because uh, there are many ragas that use both varieties of the same note. Right? That is one clear instance. And um, more importantly, there are uh, many ragas that are classifiable under more than one mela. Now, how do we uh, handle this situation? So, let us take rag, the raga bhupali or bhup. Right? It is a very, very standard basic raga. Basic raga in the sense everybody knows it. Everybody who has an introduction to the world of Hindustani music would know rag bhup. Even that, uh, it will be difficult to classify. There are some issues with classifying it under uh, the male system. So, Bhup, as you know, has these swaras, Sari, Gapadha, Sa, hmm? Sari, Gapadha, all Shuddha swaras. So, it has all Shuddha swaras, but it does not have Ma and Ni, right? It does not have Madhyam or Nishad, it drops it. It is an Audavaraga, it has only five swaras in the Aroha and Avroha. So, how do you, how can you classify this? Rag Bhup. So, as it turns out, there are four possibilities depending on the Ma and the Ni because Sarigapa, Rigapadha, Rigadha are there in the Raga and they are Shuddha. So, the male, male also has to have Rigadha, Shuddha. Besides, of course, Sa and Pa are anyway there. So, with Rigadha, Shuddha, there are four possibilities. You have Sari Gama Padhani, all Shuddha Swaras. Or you have Sari Gama Padha, Shuddha Swara, Ni Komal. It does not matter what note Ni, what uh, variety Ni is, right? Because Ni is not there in Bhup. So, Bhup can still be classified under this Mela, Sari Gama, Sari Gama Padha Ni, even though Ni is Komal. Because Bhup does not have Ni, it does not matter. Bhup can also be classified under Sari Gama Padhani, where Ma is Tevra. Because Ri Gadha, which are there in Bhup, are all Shuddha. So that is fine. Again, you can have a combination Sari Gama Padhani, where Ma is Tevra and Ni is Komal. So there are four possibilities. So, where would you classify Bhup? we would need some some uh, fiat for instance you may say that the first uh, thought the first male that you have when you derive the 32 uh, thoughts that is where it will be classified or some such thing but it is not satisfactory and performance tradition is clear that uh, bhup has to be classified under the under this one this is the Kalyan thought because as I said again this goes to the Raganga Pathati 
because bhup and yaman or kalyan they have uh, the, the phraseology the, the the kind of phrases that are that occur and the the chalan common again even in the south mohanam which is the equivalent of bhup uh, has a lot of um, commonality with kalyani which is again a uh, counterpart of kalyan or yaman so performance tradition is very clear that bhup has to be classified under kalyan thought but there is no way that the male paddhati even if we have 32 melas there is no way that we can work this uh, feature of the raga into its classification so one can say that ragas are simply too chaotic beautifully chaotic maybe but chaotic still to submit to neat mathematical categories like combinations of swaras what is achieved by the male classification at most what we can say is that if a raga is classified under a particular mela it has some of the notes of that mela it might have other notes also because that is the reality so it's it's marginally helpful at best when well, this is the problem with the mela or the thought system of classification of ragas now possibly because of these drawbacks of the mela system which bhatkande he doesn't talk about them but he probably intuitively perceived it and the, the world of hindustani music also quite un- understands this so possibly because of this the uh, we are not bothered the world of performance is not bothered by the incomplete 10 thought system and the mela system leaves the aesthetics of the raga uh, the the personality of the raga completely out of the picture and one might seek a raga classification system that that heeds this this the personality of the raga and this is what the ragaanga paddhati does which we will look at in the next video